Great, thanks. Um, so I'm happy to be here today. Uh, we're going to be presenting today over, as you kind of heard, we're going to be presenting about uh, paying with your smartphone. More specifically, we're going to be looking at Google Pay and Apple Pay. So here's kind of what we're going to see from the presentation today. Uh, we're going to go through what Apple Pay and Google Pay are, uh, when you can use them, and then we'll look at how to set them up and then some additional tips and info. So to start off, what is Google Pay? Well, Google Pay is an online payment system that acts as a digital wallet. So it's, a math, it's kind of like having your wallet, but on your phone. Uh, it replaced Android Pay and Google Wallet in 2018, and it allows you to quickly send money from your device. It essentially allows your phone to act as a credit card. Apple Pay is very similar, uh, but it's for uh, Apple and iOS devices. Uh, Apple Pay is a mobile app and a digital wallet service by Apple that allows users to make payments in person in iOS apps and on the web using Safari. Uh, it's supported by the iPhone, Apple Watch, iPad, and a MacBook slash desktop computer. Uh, so now let's look at uh, where and when you can use Apple Pay and Google Pay. Uh, they're very kind of flexible that you can use them in a lot of different situations, uh, but let's look at some instances now. Uh, you can use either of them in grocery stores, boutiques, and restaurants, and for everything from vending machines to trains and taxis. It's also accepted in all kinds of apps and websites using Safari or Chrome on your smartphone, tablet, or computer. So a lot of different uses for Apple Pay and Google Pay. So here's when you can use them. Uh, you can use Apple Pay or Google Pay whenever you see uh, the Apple Pay symbol or the, the Apple Pay symbol, the Google Pay symbol, or the contactless symbol. So this symbol that you might uh, have seen with um, tap, when you're tapping to go pay, anytime you see that symbol, you can also use Apple Pay. Uh, so you could also find uh, these two symbols that show uh, the Google Pay and the Apple Pay. And anytime you see those symbols, uh, that means you can use Apple Pay or Google Pay to pay for whatever you're buying. Here's some places that accept Apple and Google Pay. Uh, Tim Hortons, McDonald's, uh, Petro Canada, Loblaws, uh, DoorDash, Lululemon, Skip the Dishes, and Ritual. Again. Uh, a lot of uh, places these days have the little tap terminals where you would usually go and tap your credit or debit card. Uh, but in those same terminals, you could also use Apple Pay and Google Pay. It always works, or it should work. Here are some advantages of Apple and Google Pay. Uh, first of all, they're extremely secure payment options designed with privacy up front. So, of course, when you are considering using Apple and Google Pay, most people are thinking about uh, privacy and security as one of the most important factors when they're making a decision. So uh, Apple Pay and Google Pay kept that in mind. So they have privacy and security as some of the uh, uh, top features that they focus on when designing the two systems. Uh, security features built into both the hardware and the software of compatible devices and it helps to protect users' transactions and financial details. So uh, some of these uh, security features uh, aren't found in traditional means of paying. So for example, if you're paying in cash or you're paying with a debit or credit card, uh, you might not have the same hardware and software features as seen with Apple and Google Pay. So that might be an added advantage to using uh, one of these systems. You can also make contactless payments, secure purchases in store, in apps and on the web. So there's a lot of different uses. It's not only in, in um, apps or in stores, you can use it in a multitude of different ways. Uh, from those two apps, you can also send money, store tickets and cash in on rewards. So it kind of centralizes a lot of the things that happen. So for example, if you buy sports tickets, you can keep them in your Apple wallet and it will appear, it will appear there uh, in the same spots as your Apple Pay. Uh, if you link your Google Pay account to your PayPal account, it will automatically be activated on Gmail. 
the Google Play Store, YouTube, or any other paid service offered by Google without having to log in repeatedly. So if you have your Google Pay account and you link it to your PayPal account, what it's saying is that when you go to pay uh, uh, or whenever you go to play, pay for something online, your Google will remember that and it will make it a lot easier for you to uh, make those transactions if you link the two accounts. So here's how to navigate Apple Pay specifically. Uh, the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna go onto your iPhone or your Apple device, and you're gonna go to the wallet app. And it looks just like this. It's kind of just an icon of a wallet. And then once you open that app, if you haven't already, you're gonna start off by uh, uh, adding a card to your Apple Pay wallet. And then it should look something like this photo here on the right. It says add a credit or debit card to wallet. And then all you do is click add. And then you select whether you want a debit card or credit card or a transit card. Uh, if you're just getting started, you're probably gonna start off with the debit or credit card. And then you can manually, or you can scan your credit or debit card. So what that does is it will open up your phone and it will scan through your debit or credit card and read the information. So it kind of does that for you and a lot quickly, a lot quicker. Or you can enter the card details manually so you'll go on uh, it'll give you an option or give you a space to put in the card number and uh, the name on the card so you can do that there. Then your, brand, your bank or card issuer will verify your information and decide if you can use your card with Apple Pay. So uh, once you complete that, uh, it will allow you to or it will send a notification to the bank or whoever's issuing the card and then they'll verify uh, the Apple Pay. So it's a it makes it a bit more secure that way. And then once your bank or card issuer has verified your card, uh, tap next, and then you can start using Apple Pay to purchase items. Here's how to use Apple Pay to send money. Uh, first off, you wanna open the messages app and then start a new conversation uh, with the person you wanna send the money to or tap on an existing conversation. Uh, it should look bring up something just like this. Then you'll click on the Apple Pay button. So once you go to your keyboard, there are uh, a bunch of icons lined up at the top, and one of them is Apple Pay. Uh, it's, it just says Apple Pay with a black background. If you don't see the Apple Pay button, you might just want to tap the screen. So once you click on that Apple Pay button, it should so show something just like that. Then you'll enter the amount that you want to send. So you, you get one of these uh, two screens and it will say, uh, it will allow you to enter the amount that you want to send to your friend. And then all you do next is you click the pay button. And then once you've clicked the pay button, it will show up uh, as it does on the far right. And then you hit the send button. Then the final step is to confirm your payment with face ID, touch ID, or your passcode, and your money will be sent successfully. So uh, all you have to do is it'll bring up something like this. And if you have a device that has face ID enabled, you'll double click on the side button to the right, and then it will uh, verify with your uh, face ID. And, or if you have a touch ID device, it will verify with your touch ID. Here's how to use Apple Pay in stores. Uh, to use Apple Pay in stores, you need to double press the button on the side of your phone or your home button and verify your face ID with touch or verify with your face ID or touch ID. So how that works is once you go to pay, you open your phone and then you double click the side button or the power button, and then you'll verify using face ID or touch ID. And then the next thing you'll do is you'll point your palm your phone on the card reader, uh, just as you would do uh, with a credit card when you're going to tap. So just as it shows in this photo on the bottom, and then it will complete your transaction. So here's some uh, notes on security and safety. Uh, for Apple Pay, it requires extra verification. Uh, it doesn't share your card information with anyone. Uh, your information can't be skimmed, so people can't uh, use devices to read your information from there. 
uh, it doesn't store your card information on your device. So if you lose your phone or if you uh, or if something happens to your phone, it's not like your your uh, the banking information will be available to everyone. Uh, it doesn't store it on the device, so it's a bit more secure that way. Uh, you can suspend the service. So if for a time you want you don't want to use your uh, your Apple Pay or if you're passing your phone on to someone else uh, for a while, you can suspend the service so that uh, they can't use Apple Pay while you're while they have your phone or while that is suspended. And then you can keep your device passcode secure. And then you can set up with Face ID or Touch ID, which are even more secure ways to uh, keep your devices uh, private and secure. Here's some additional features with the Apple Wallet. Uh, the Apple Wallet is an iPhone app that organizes your credit cards, debit cards, coupons, movie tickets, boarding passes, and rewards cards on your phone, and even if you're on your Apple Watch if you have one. So if you have an Apple Watch, you can also see your wallet app from there. The cards and information you save in the wallet app are accessible when you use Apple Pay. Uh, and you can, it's available for phones with iOS 15 or higher installed. So if you're not getting the Apple uh, Pay and the Apple Wallet app on your phone, you want to make sure that your phone is up to date. So if you're wondering how you can get Apple Pay, you can contact Apple Store customer service at this number right here, or you can visit help for uh, more information, and that's just at support.apple.com. Now that we've gone through uh, Apple Pay, we'll look more at uh, Google Pay and how to set that up. So we'll start off by uh, going through how to set up Google Pay on your iPhone or your on your phone. Uh, the first thing you want to do is download the Google Play app from the App Store or the Play Store, depending on what kind of device you have. Then you want to uh, open the Google Pay app and then tap the Get Started button. Next, tap the Connect to Gmail button and the window will pop up asking for your permission to give app Google Pay access to your device's location. Uh, just a note uh, is that Google Pay wants to know your location so that I can notify you when you're in a place that accepts Google Pay or uses loyalty cards. To use the locate feature, tap the blue lettered turn on button at the bottom of the screen. Uh, if you're on Apple uh, or an iOS device, you wanna open the Google, Play, the Google Pay app and then at the bottom tap payment methods or at the bottom uh, tap add credit or debit card. Then you'll enter your card information, and then if you, you're asked to verify your payment method, choose an option from the list provided. Uh, then you want to find and enter the verification code. Uh, so uh, this actually works on both devices, so Android and Apple, if you're using Google Pay. And then what you want to do is you want to open the, or sorry, sorry. So this was the steps for how to do it on iOS, and here are the steps on how to do it on Android. So if you're on Android, uh, you wanna open the Google Pay app and then swipe up from the bottom, and you're gonna click on tap, or you're gonna tap add a card and then debit or credit card, and then use the camera to capture your card info or enter it manually. So as I said before, you can either scan your card using the camera on your phone, or you could enter with the details uh, yourself. And then if you're asked to verify your payment method, choose an option from the list provided, and then you can find and enter the verification code. Here's how to set up Google Pay on your computer. What you wanna do is go to the Google Pay website and make sure that you're signed in. The Google Pay website can be found at pay.google.com. And then at the bottom, you wanna click on add payment method, then add credit card or debit card. Then again, you'll enter your card information. And then you're, if you're asked to verify the payment method, choose an option from the list provided. And then you'll find and enter the verification code. Here's a note that if you add a card, you might see a small charge on your account from Google Pay. This checks that your card and your account are valid and it won't affect your balance and it will go away soon. This applies to iOS, Android, and on a computer. 
here's how to use Google Pay. So if you're online or in the app uh, with the Google Pay, you don't have to enter card information every time you want to make an online purchase because it's already saved. So usually when you're shopping online, uh, you every time you go uh, to a new website to buy something new, you'll have to enter your card information manually. But if you're using Google Pay, it'll save it automatically so that you can, so it's a bit more convenient for you. And then if you're asked to choose a payment method and enter your shipping information, you want to do that. And then you'll confirm your order. So here's how to use Google Pay in store. Uh, first, you want to turn on your phone screen and then unlock your phone. Uh, and then hold the back of your phone close to the payment reader for a few seconds. Uh, this will trigger the, your default card. And then once you're done paying, a blue check mark will appear on the screen. So all you have to do is open your phone, hold it to the card reader, and it will process the payment. Uh, if you're asked, you might need to follow the instructions on the screen. Uh, some stores use older software that asks for a PIN or a signature. Here are some additional features with, uh, with uh, Apple Pay, uh, or Google Pay, I should say. Just like Apple Pay, you can send money to friends and request money from them. You can store your boarding passes on your Google Pay wallet. You can add loyalty and gift cards to your Google Pay. And then like how you can pay with an Apple Watch, you can pay with an Android smartwatch if you use Google Pay. And you can link your PayPal account to your Google Pay. Here's some notes on uh, Google Pay's security and privacy. Uh, once you add cards to the app, it generates a virtual account number and your real card number is never given to the merchant. So it kind of protects your, your privacy in that way. And then whether you're paying or accepting payment, your information is encrypted and you can easily revoke access to your Google account on any device. Google Pay transactions are secure and then and the Find My Device feature lets you know, or uh, lets you find lock or erase devices that have been stolen or lost. So no unauthorized person can use your card. So what that's really saying is that if you are in a situation where your phone is stolen or you've lost your phone, uh, the Find My Device feature allows you to lock that device so that no one has access to your payment and or any of the information on your phone. Uh, Google may use data from Google Pay transactions uh, to facilitate your transactions, to show you your transaction details and history, uh, to resolve a problem that you're having with Google Pay, and to provide you with other Google Pay features. Great, so uh, there won't be a live demo today, but uh, thanks for listening uh, for the, to the presentation. I hope we were able to take something away from it. Uh, if you'd like to learn this lesson with a Cyber Seniors mentor, uh, please go to www.cyberseniors.org or we'll call the number shown on the screen to register for a one-on-one -on -one phone session. Uh, we also host weekly tech drop-in sessions from 2 to 3 p.m. every 2 to 3 p.m. every Thursday.